The newest edition of the 802 News podcast put on by WCAX and Mark Johnson is out. Take a listen. It's extremely challenging and to know that you're going to go on possibly at least one overdose an hour every single hour that you work without sleeping for 48 hours can be difficult. And not only that, then going to the scene, giving advanced level care to people that are literally dying and then having them come back with, you know, aggression or violence or anger. Mark, you spoke with Burlington firefighters about their role on the front lines of the opioid crisis. What were some of the main takeaways you heard from them? I think the main thing I heard from them was um, feeling defeated. They're dealing with a record number of overdoses. They're in a 48-hour shift, sometimes dealing with the same person more than once, giving them Narcan more than once, and they don't feel like they're making any sort of a difference. They're not complaining but they just feel as though they're not providing the kind of help uh, or services that really need to be to be done out there. Now, one thing that struck me when I was listening to the podcast was their comment that patient demeanor has changed. Talk about that aspect of it. Well, when the, a rescue person shows up and um, you and I are in medical distress, we're usually quite grateful that they're there. In many cases, when they're dealing with somebody with an overdose, they bring them back out with the Narcan and that person is angry. They've, in a sense, um, blown their high for that, for that day and they've got to go out and get more drugs. And, you know, it's just not the kind of response that they're used to. They're also going into, you know, terribly violent situations. They're going into situations, City Hall Park, 2 a.m. in the morning, um, and they're wearing, you know, gear that you would expect a SWAT team to wear. It, it's, a, it's a whole different experience than it was three or four years ago. And I want to make it clear, though, in the podcast that they weren't being judgmental of these people who they find in, in a state of medical distress. No, th these are compassionate, dedicated, empathetic people. What I think frustrates them is that they're the, they're the, the call of last resort. They're being brought in when people are in real distress. They will help anybody and everybody. But what they see are people that are really, you know, suffering and that they can't provide the kind of help and services that the rest of the community really needs to step up and do. So did they talk about where that support then needs to come from? Um, because they said, I believe they, if I'm quoting them correctly, they kind of said that support needs to come from elsewhere at this point. Yeah, and w one of the points that they made to me is, let's try something. You know, what's working, what's happening right now isn't working. So let's try something. Let's try bringing more mental health counselors in downtown. Let's maybe even have a safe injection site. You know, they're not getting involved in the politics of this, but, you know, the, what's happening right now isn't working. So let's try something else. Is there a community perception of this? Because I think when people hear firefighters in the name, they hear fire, and they assume that the firefighters, you know, might respond to some medical calls, but are primarily there to respond when you see smoke and flames. Um, has that just totally changed? Well, all Burlington Fire Department members are also trained as medical rescue personnel, either as EMTs or paramedics. They wish they were fighting fires. That is a, a rarity compared to the medical calls that they're now getting. And, you know, a large number of those medical calls, unlike three, four, or five years ago, are these opioid calls. And they said they went to 56 calls in a 48-hour period for unresponsive individuals, and that was about half of the total calls that they went out on during that 48-hour shift. Are right. they just overwhelmed? They, they are overwhelmed, and they use the term compassion fatigue. I mean, they will show up. They are committed. But, you know, when you're going to um, help somebody a, a number of times in the same shift, you know, you just you run out of gas, and that's the situation that they're in right now. And you can hear much more in the newest edition of the 802 News podcast on our website, WCAX.com. Just go under the News tab, and you'll see it there. Mark, thanks so much for the time. You bet.